I just did an interview with the T-Nards Out magazine. And uh, if you're interested, uh, we're going to show you some parts of it right now. <laughs> You said about working on the new Avantasia album, so I want to start by asking you first anything you can say about that. Oh, any, anything I can say about that. Uh, okay, we started uh, already three years ago to work on that album uh, because we had like a little leftovers from the from the previous album. There's one song, uh, it's now the longest song on the album, it's called Ravenchild. We already had parts of it uh, back in the day and that was the start for this album. So we kept on working basically uh, without, without really stopping right after the release of the last album. Uh, so we made this whole thing uh, over a period of basically, I would say, three years. So we had all the peace in the world to uh, come up with stuff, abandon stuff do it again. We had quite some time w for the work on this album, which is really, really, really great and really helps the result. I'm very interested in knowing about the process of recording a song from like beginning to end. Of course, it's totally individual and totally different from song to song, from production to production. And even in, inside of one production, it could be uh, that one song is made like this when one song is made like this. There's a lot of different approaches uh, to make an album. One of the, 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 the most classic ones and the most uh, romantic ones is probably the imagination. You have like a full band in the studio and they work on the songs and they, they exchange ideas and they play the stuff and it develops to something because uh, everybody has a share on the result. And which is uh, actually a version of a production that I really love. But it also happens differently sometimes, especially nowadays, a lot of stuff happens over the internet. You might get a song idea and somebody works it out in the computer. Maybe you record it already uh, partly at home. Uh, maybe somebody else, maybe in this case, like Avantasia, Toby could put uh, vocals on it to, to check it out in his studio at home. That is, that's actually also the way that we worked on some stuff on this uh, uh, album. It's actually a pretty new way for, for me to work with uh, Toby because he just set up his own studio. So uh, not on all the songs, but on a lot of songs we worked like that, that he recorded uh, vocals at home and we were like on the phone a lot of times. He sends me ideas, I work them out. We worked them out together I said, and I sent it, sent it back and uh, sometimes he also came, we worked it out here together, but not really as a band, like, uh, like, like I said before, but more like the two of us. And then we slightly put the stuff together until we like it. Uh, so there are a lot of different ways of approaching it. It's very, very hard to explain away because there are many, many and our mixtures and uh, I can just tell you, I prefer to have the band in the studio, which is obviously a little bit harder on Avantasia because it's more, more a project than a band in a way. It is a band that plays live, but uh, you know, like we have all these singers and stuff, which is, we cannot like meet all together with like 12, 14 people for three months and do an album. This is not gonna work and it's, it would be too many egos in one uh, in one thing so it is necessary that maybe toby and i make m most of the decisions beforehand before anybody else gets involved uh, it would be too much <laughs> how has being a musician influenced the way you produced and the other way around how um, Do you I'm think a person can be a good pr producer without having actually played a lot as a musician yeah, I would say everything has its pros and cons. Uh, I mean, I can basically talk a little bit more out of my perspective, of, of course. Uh, it was always, I always found it uh, a, uh, yeah, an advantage being a musician because, and being also uh, basically a musician that plays not only one instrument, so I could uh, think in the frame of the instruments. It gives me also an easy time to talk to the, to the musicians, but sometimes I feel uh, like a more, I would say it in quotations, naive 
way of approaching stuff can be an advantage as well because uh, you are not distracted by uh, by knowledge <laughs> uh, which yeah. can which can be an advantage like a child more a more a more pure way of approaching music like in a certain way can be good no? and uh, sometimes i like this combination uh, a lot of times singers can be like this in this case it's not not necessarily toby because he is a musician as well and he really knows what he's doing but uh, there are some singers that are practically uh, in quotations again only singers and they would not be able to play guitar or play anything they could sing me something and they'd tell me like oh maybe something oriental i don't know i have it this and that in mind and some heavy drums i don't really know how and then uh, they sing you a melody a melody that you would never come up with because it is maybe simple and you would say mm, it's not advanced enough to be on an album maybe out of a musician's perspective but it can be actually very good for for the music to have that approach a little bit more because it could give access to the music to more people sometimes. You work a lot with bands who use a lot of orchestration and choirs and bombastic. Mm. Do you think, do I ever feel there's a limit to how much more can be pulled? Because everyone's like, the next album is even bigger than the previous one. Next album is even mm -hmm. bigger. Is there a limit to how big the album should get? You know, first of all, I think it's just uh, it's because you basically know the stuff that is uh, done like this uh, of me. But it, it's not necessarily a speciality of me putting a lot of stuff in because I'm actually uh, a big friend of not putting so much stuff into, inside the music. I, w I was just it just happened that I uh, that the first thing that I was working on in a more professional frame, except Heaven's Gate that I was doing before as a guitar player and where I was actually sliding into the production role a little bit already. But the first thing that I worked on together with Charlie Bauerfeind back in the day was Angra Holy... Uh, oh shit, what is the name? First album of Angra. <laughs> I, I don't remember it at the moment. The second is Holy Land. Angels Cry. Angels Cry, of course. It was actually a very good experience to work on this album. We had like... I have like still... Uh, good memories uh, to that recording. Recording with Andre, it was uh, really cool. We did a lot of vocals in the night, like Wuthering Hates. I still remember that recording, for example. Uh, on this album, in the process of doing it, it, it always had a little bit of a classical approach. And also we had this uh, Brazilian percussion. And we always thought like, hmm, what is the strong, I mean, that is basically my approach in productions. What is the strong part in the production and how can I boost? Uh, the strong part, not how can I put myself in in a way to show people I was producing it. Uh, to I don't I don't le actually really want to leave a footprint. So you consider it like that's my sound. Uh, I just want to try to boost the quality that is already there. And in this case, it was this. It was there was a classical influence and there was Brazilian per percussion mixed which made this, the sound of Angra very special and exotic. And then we thought like, how, how could it be if we really boost up this classical approach and put like orchestra in? And then I, I was actually working on that a lot, on this orchestra part. Back in the day I was doing more stuff like this, working on classical orchestra. Uh, I'm actually not doing that anymore. I do that every once in a while, but I'm don't not with a lot of effort, but I do basically demos, uh, a rough rough demo of some orchestra sometimes. But I would give it to Miro because he was specializing in in this on the way. So uh, he's working it out in a, in, in a really cool way. I'm not really doing this anymore. But this production was very successful, Angels Cry, I will never forget. It uh, had gold status in Japan and I think also in Brazil, I don't really know, but it was really selling worldwide. And of course, people after that came to me or to us, uh, approaching me because of this elements 
but it's not necessarily what I always wanted to do or, or, or my focus. It just happened to be successful on this particular album, and one of the first I worked on. And then a band like uh, that you of course know, uh, Rhapsody, approached me because of my work with Heaven's Gate and also Angra. And they they loved uh, loved this this classical stuff and the epic classical influences. Uh, and so it continued. So I did uh, Legendary Tales together with Miro, actually. Uh, first thing that we actually did in the, in the Gate studio when we opened up. And uh, this was also very successful. And then, it, I mean, there was, we couldn't stop it anymore. I was just basically offered almost only this kind of music. And then you kind of get, I don't want to have it like uh, nev negatively sounding, but you get, you get stuck into, into something. It, this could easily happen. But I was always doing other things uh, besides that. And um, I would not say that I'm approaching this sound. Or like I, if a band comes to me, I, said, I, would, I would say, uh, I put a lot of classical instruments in now because it has to be. I never do this. Uh, I'm totally the opposite, actually. I just did a production which, which is totally different. It's, my, it's not even metal. Uh, it's, uh, and it's super, super simple. Simple, exactly done the way we just talked about. We arranged the stuff in the studio in a, in a very short time. Wrote, I wrote the stuff with the singer, his name is Joe, in a very short time. And on, on acoustic guitar, we didn't even really demo it. And then we just met with some great musicians, worked it out together in the studio. I let everybody's ideas in, and we have something very special. And uh, play, basically, with no overdubs. Sometimes you do like little uh, gimmicks, of course, but the, the essence of the music is what we actually play live in the studio. And I love that. But everything can be interesting. It's also great if you have like a, a song like on the new Aventasia, like a song like Raven Child or like the opening uh, song Ghost in the Moon. You probably didn't hear this in the album yet, right? No. <laughs> but... Uh, The, the set list, other the list, uh, basically the list is of, uh, already on the internet, and these are songs that are very big. And uh, of course, it's it's very interesting to work it out in such a big way. We put like huge choirs and we stagger stuff, and I try to mix it in a certain way that you can uh, that it becomes a story, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, also, this is this is really interesting. It is really cool if it's finished, and I love it. But I also love the simple stuff. So it's not my approach. It's just everything, yeah. everything done with a certain quality and with a certain uh, emotion is good for me. How much is songwriting a team sport? Do you believe that artists should rely on themselves and a few close connections, or should they just go to where the best melodies and lyrics come from? Totally depends on uh, the artist. I mean, on, on the on the music. I saw both ways. Uh, sometimes I thought it would have been better if they would have stuck to the to the main songwriter, not letting so many people in, because the sound of the band changes too much if you let a lot of people in, and it could be like a maybe it could be more colorful, but it could also also be more messed up, and uh, it's not the, the 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 sound anymore of the band if you change too much. But sometimes it can also be that the ideas, uh, somebody is stuck with the ideas and needs some fresh input uh, and new ideas and it gets even better. It totally depends on the work and how it develops because, and who's working together. Like I just said, I, I try to not totally change somebody's work. I just try to improve it. If I would, I'm asked to improve songwriting, which I'm also doing, sometimes I just, get called to for vocals line for vocal lines or <coughs> just go over the songs one more time or I write completely from the beginning I do every sort of thing I think if for example uh, Luca would call me again <laughs> from Rhapsody and he would say like I'm stuck with my songwriting can you help me and I would say yeah great but uh, I was doing lots of this and that in the meantime so We have it has to be like this and that, and I put like weird influences in. Maybe it's probably not good for the music, but yeah. it could be good if I try to understand what he was doing before and try to find, 
together with him a, a good way of yeah bringing mm -hmm. that to the next le the next level because you cannot answer this for everybody it's very individual sorry you don't really have a lot of answers from me <laughs> that you can really use as an answer but the, the this field right. is the field is so wide it's yeah. it's extreme because I it mean, can we want to do more of a discussion, not really like a question and answer, more of a get people to understand more about the field, exactly, because there's no one recipe for how to do it. Yeah, what, what, there's one thing you have to understand. There is no recipe, which is, which is actually a good point, but there is also a recipe <laughs> in a way. I mean, there is no recipe because there are so many different ways, but there's one thing for sure that you need, uh, which is passion without passion and also most of the time hard work you will not have like a constant good work you need you nobody can think ah oh, i'm a musician ah oh, easy uh, i do this and that so write some songs here and there it's not that easy it's it's a lot of work if you want to do it right and if you want to do it good if you want to improve and if you want to make everybody happy Maybe uh, maybe it's also fine if you only make yourself happy, but it's it's a piece of art to make yourself happy and also others because that's why you make music or many people make music in the first place to also make other people happy. I have to say, for me, it's the most important to be happy myself first of all. But of course, I'm super happy when other people love it and uh, are also happy with the stuff I'm I'm working on. But like I said, the recipe is you need passion, you, you need patience sometimes, and you need, yeah, you need to work on this stuff. You need to be willing to work for it. And uh, this is a part that I can assure you is very helpful in creating music. Thanks for watching the, the interview. And I just wanted to know if, if there's something that surprised you uh, I mean, one of my answers to to these questions uh, in a certain way and if you if it does just write me and then I would maybe talk about that specific thing a little bit more in detail in the future and yeah maybe it's interesting for you hopefully <laughs>